Hi everyone! Welcome back to another episode of the Seattle Stitcher. My name is Megan. You can find me on Instagram as Megan underscore Babauta underscore on Ravelry as Mama Made the M. You can email me at the Seattle Stitcher at gmail.com. I'll have all of my social medias linked down below because I do have a few other accounts and uh, yeah, reach out to me there if you don't want to reach out to me via the comment section here. So I like to kind of just hop right in and start with my starts you know the drill. So that's what we're going to do. Um, this is actually a start from yesterday, Friday. And this is a sal that I'm doing with Bridget, the museum stitcher. We don't have like a name for it or anything. Um, if you guys are wanting something like that, or you're wanting to stitch it with us, let me know, um, in the comment section below and I'll come up with a hashtag <laughs> to use, but this is practical magic by the primitive hair. And I'm just going to go ahead and pop pictures on the screen because even though it's more editing for me, I just feel like it's a little bit easier <laughs> to do. And I am using the called for Old Salem Linen, which is the Primitive Hair Linen. It's a 30 count. I'm stitching it all as called for two over two. Although I will say the colors compared to the cover photo, I felt like were a little off. So for instance, um, Storm Clouds, this is Storm Clouds. I think you can see how green it is kind of at the top there like it's very green and when I looked at the cover photo I really wasn't expecting that but I will say if you're a fan of practical magic like I am then you know that the green kind of works because the rose bush like it's a huge part of the movie um I mean just in case anyone's not seen the movie I'm not going to spoil it but <laughs> I feel like the green kind of works and there's margaritas at the bottom because obviously and so the green kind of ties in with that and so I'm gonna leave that I will say though it calls for um I think it was witching hour let me double check yeah witching hour for the cloaks of the sisters and I just felt like my witching hour and my DMC 310 were identical there was barely any difference and so I have a bunch of swamp water which is a weak style works and it's a black brown variegated like solid black to solid brown kind of variegation and I just felt like that would give it enough I don't know enough contrast and also it could just kind of look like an old witch's cloak so I'm gonna go ahead and I am swapping out witching hour with swamp water but I did decide to just go ahead and go with storm clouds even though it wasn't necessarily what I was expecting but yeah here are the flosses so really really easy to kit up I would just say if you're not wanting the main letters the large letters to be this green color to swap it out with some kind of gray you could even do a DMC and if witching hour similarly to my incident is very close to your 310 swamp water is a good alternative and I will say, I do feel like it's called for in a lot of different patterns. So I just happen to have a lot of it in stash. So I started this yesterday, like I said, and I stitched on it in parent pickup line. <laughs> and here is my tiny little start. I just started at the very top left corner, which is my usual. And I started with the P. I do feel like even though I mean you can tell here in the thread it's very green I kind of feel like for some reason stitching up it's not too bad it's not too in your face green colored it's a good Halloween green kind of grungy and the fabric is fabulous I really do like their fabric but I've also heard you can't soak their fabric or wash their fabric in any kind of way so I'm just being mindful of that I'm gonna try to steam it <laughs> or probably not even steam it, but do a really, really light iron at the end because the way it comes folded up is like in a tiny cube with twine around it. And so it is very, very, you can see the wrinkles from that, but I was just scared to press it <laughs> because it uh, is not color fast. So I was like, whatever, I'll wait to the end. <laughs> and the needle miner I have on here is from my friend Alexis. She gave that to me at StitchCon. And she does have a channel. Um, I'm sure you guys have all watched it or heard of it. Alexis underscore my amazing world. So thank you, girl. I'd be using them needle minders. I love them. So that was my first start. And I know I have one more start in here, but I got to dig for it. Okay. She's not organized. Okay. My next start is actually a Sal and this is a Sal from the New Hampshire Stitcher. She has an amazing channel here on YouTube. If you haven't checked her out, definitely go take a look. She started a Sal called the back to school Sal and 
my daughter is starting her first year of kindergarten so it really felt like I wanted to start something special and something that we both would love and cherish and Binks is at it again with the toys but I will say all my comments from last <laughs> last video said that they were cool with the jingly sound of him playing <laughs> but I decided to go ahead and start Halloween Hawk Run Hollow so I'm gonna pop a picture on the screen again I just feel like it's easier to pop these pictures on the screen this is kind of like my tale of woe start I'm also kind of pairing this with another hashtag <laughs> and that hashtag would be the restart 2023 because I have restarted this now three times and that's because every single time I just didn't like my fabric. Um, I didn't like my fabric or I didn't like the, I was going to have to like the second time I restarted it, I realized the fabric was too small and I was going to have to cut out a bunch of blocks. And I was like, you know, I love the whole pattern. Yeah. There are some blocks that aren't my favorite. Um, like especially like nautical scenes are not really my style. And so there was a few things where I was like, mm, you know, but I really love the pattern and I want the whole thing. So this was my back to school and kind of tied in with my restart 2023. And I'll tag both those ladies down below. The hashtags they're using are on Instagram. So you would have to have an Instagram. Um, um, I mean, I'm sure everyone knows that, but there's a lot of people who don't have Instagram and, um, it's a fun place to be for the cross-stitching community. But anyways, I'm stitching this one over two on 40 count with the call for DMCs. Really, it's an MPI, but they give you the DMCs as the conversion, so I'm using the DMCs. And I'm stitching it on an XJU, yeah, XJU Designs grandpa sleeve. And here is my start. Oh, it looks so good. I was a little bit worried about the ghosts here, and I will say I might end up pulling them out and restitching with like, um, what is it, B5200 is the little bit of a brighter white, because I think these ones are just white, they're blanc. But yeah, I love this. I actually stitched this whole portion in the wrong color, like this whole middle section of the house. So I did rip that all out and I've restarted that, um, which is funny because the very first time I started this project, I had stitched the moon in the wrong color. And so I don't know, it's just haunting me, something about this project, but I love it. And I've kind of just pushed through, restitched it all. And I'm really happy with my progress. I know it's not much, but you know, I got lots of stuff going on, which I'll get to later in life life stuff but yeah I love this fabric here is the fabric kind of overall I feel like it's a really good repeat of the modeling you can see there's like these orange splotches surrounded by the gray and I really like that personally I think for a project like this it's going to be fabulous because some of the blocks are full coverage some of them aren't and the orange splotches gave me like midnight moon kind of vibes with like these dark blotches around kind of like not really clouds but I don't know it just works it works so I'm really happy with this and I love how it's stitching up I don't know if I mentioned uh with the last start I'm stitching that two over two on the 30 count so as called for that's exactly what the cover photo was and I like the full coverage and uh, it's just so nice this is honestly some of the smoothest linen I've ever stitched on it feels like as smooth as a bed sheet or a pillowcase or even like a linen top would so yeah I love this <laughs> um my daughter loves it too so I feel like it was a really good project to do for the back to school um I do have a small floss ring here that has all the colors that are called for in the first block I have a couple missing and then I went ahead on a large floss drop these are not all of them I still have a few more I need to put on the ring. I have these kind of, I'm just going to work off of the small ring just so I don't have to sort through all these numbers every time. So block one, and then eventually I'll put these onto the large ring, swap out for block two colors, so on and so forth. And that way it just makes it a little bit more manageable. This is definitely one I'm stitching at home because the piece of linen is so large. It's a fat quarter. So it's actually not really that bad but it's just there's a lot of excess fabric right now because I'm only on one block and I don't really I've been enjoying stitching in hand lately but when you have a lot of excess fabric I've been finding that I have kind of a hard time getting around all the fabric every time I'm pulling the stitches <laughs> so that's a little annoying but um I'm really enjoying it it's just been fabulous and I have been using my art doc glasses with this which are the magnifying glasses I know I've been talking about them a lot but I really like them. <laughs> I did get sent them for free, so maybe it's totally just me being partial to them, but 
Um, I do know a few people now have messaged me that have ordered them and they're really enjoying them too. I'll have a discount code for that in the down bar below if you're interested and a link so you could just go click the link and go straight to it and try that. But anyways, I'm going to move on from my starts to my whips and I don't know, I'm feeling very proud of myself. Like I got some good progress in on some things. So first I'm going to show you guys a wavy ride by Blackbird Designs. This was my StitchCon start. I did go to StitchCon 2023. It was my very first um, like cross-stitching retreat, cross-stitching event. Um, you guys know I am a really new stitcher. I've been stitching for like a year and a half. <laughs> so um, StitchCon was like a huge thing for me. It was a big deal and I totally loved every minute of it. It was great. Um, and I got to hang out with some of my like closest girlfriends and I got to make more friends and it was just fabulous. But I'm gonna pop a picture on the screen of where I was before. And I guess I'll show you the flosses first. I'm stitching this two over two on a, I believe 36 count needle and flax and Dora. Um, I'd asked forever ago for some, uh, like some other options that weren't murky. I picture this plus because my cut of murky is very green. Like it's definitely more hot and not Halloween, but more, um, Christmas green. And so someone had commented and said like, you know, the shipping takes a long time, but it's totally worth it. Try this fabric. And the fabric is amazing. Um, the communication, the customer service wasn't great. Like I, I emailed them and they just never responded, but I mean, I eventually got the fabric. So I guess that's all that matters. <laughs> but here is where I got to in the past couple weeks. So I've been stitching on this in the morning in parent drop off. Cause like I said, Amira started kindergarten and she's really, really loving it. But yeah, I feel like I got so much progress and I really love how it's looking. Um, I will say right here, this, the black part in this little checkered border is supposed to be onyx, which is this kind of loopy, it's the same color that I used for this stitch down here. But I kind of liked continuing just the same color as I did for the A Wavy Ride quote. And I like it, I think it's turning out great. I just like literally need to curve this corner and that's the size of it. So I love the fabric too. Like I said, the fabric is beautiful. It is amazing. <laughs> it's the perfect Halloween grungy fabric. It's very soft, but it's so soft that it does a fray really, really quickly. So definitely if you have a serger or even just a regular sewing machine that has a dial that you can switch the stitches, just switch to a really long, maybe like a zigzag stitch and get your corners done. So she doesn't fray too bad for you, but yeah love this love how it's turning out this is also a needle liner from alexis <laughs> i've just been popping these tiny ones on for parent pickup because i've been stitching in hand and the tiny ones that alexis gave me are perfect because they're not weighing down my fabric so much that it's hard for me to stitch in hand but that works great for me and i've really been enjoying it um on here i have from the little house stitcher she passed out these at StitchCon. it's like a little kind of, um, what do they call this? Floss jewelry? I don't know. <laughs> but I felt like I was super cute and it kind of gives me like these Halloween vintage vibes. So I thought that was really cute with this, but I'm really enjoying the project. I actually, I also made a mistake on this. Um, I don't know if it's just like pregnancy brain or what, but <laughs> this whole entire quote, I think I got like to here, I had done in the red color. I don't know what I was thinking. I honestly was not going to frog it. And I was talking to the girls and was like, I don't even want to frog this. And they were like, I would just frog it. <laughs> but most of us in that chat are like pretty perfectionist when it comes to like, it has to be exactly like the pattern <laughs> or it has to be exactly what I see in my head kind of thing. And so I did just go ahead and frog it. I was gonna leave it, but the contrast between the A, cause the A in the A Wavy Ride is a different color. And so the A there and then the A Wavy Ride just was not working, but it's fine. I redid it. And this, I have in a project bag that I sewed up for myself. It just has some bright orange interior fabric and this super cute kind of cauldrons and cats with pumpkins. And I think, the, is there bats on here too? I don't know. I don't think so. Just cats and witch hats and stuff. But, oh yeah, there is bats. But it's super cute. I really like the fabric. I got it at Gigi's Quilts, which is a quilting, like, fabric store in Yelm. Yelm, Washington. So, really, it's a far drive. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> the next thing I worked on, this is also in a me made bag. Again, fabric from Gigi's. It has, like, this cute fox lining. Or I guess it's, like, woodland creatures. And then... 
exterior. And this is the bookshelf. Again, I'll pop a picture on the screen. And this is a, gosh, what is this? Little House Needleworks pattern, sorry. Um, it's a Little House Needleworks pattern. I'll pop a picture of where I was before because I didn't do very much switching on this. This was just one really short morning. And I am doing all the call for DMCs, really beautiful array of colors. I don't remember what fabric I'm using. Um, Week Styrox Gray, Week Styrox Gray. And here's where I got to. So again, not much progress, but I mean, some is better than none. I just added some more leaves down here. And then I started stitching the sticks that kind of divide the project in half. Cause I am about at the halfway point. I do have the whole top part finished. Um, I'm pretty sure. I think there's like two book stacks here and that's it. But yeah, I have like the bottom section, which is all of the authors and the books. So I'm excited about that. I just think this is so cute. I love the way it looks. To be honest, the books that are on here are not really my favorites, <laughs> but I love the way it looks so much that I'm definitely gonna keep stitching it. I'm probably gonna hang it right there when it's finished. Um, I have a few projects that are kind of book themed that I wanna like stagger on that piece of wall right there. Um, no one really sees that piece of wall besides me because my sitting, like I sit to stitch right over there. <laughs> I, sit, I stitch on the couch and when I'm sitting there I can see this empty wall because like uh, these two bookshelves they kind of meet in the corner this is a shorter one and then this is a it's a little bit over six feet and yeah there's like this empty space but not that any of that matters <laughs> I just want some cross stitch actually hung up on my walls okay <laughs> So I'm loving this one. Um, you know what's funny is that I realized I stitched this one one over two on a 32. I'm pretty sure a 32 count, which is not my style so much anymore. I'd, I'd much prefer like a one over two on 36 count. But when I re-picked it back up, I wasn't even thinking. So I just started stitching two over two. <laughs> and so the sticks, like the twigs that I started, those are all two over two and I'm going to leave it. I figured in the end, if it pops out too much to me, like my, in my eyes drawn to it, then I will go ahead and restitch it. Cause it's just straight lines, super easy stitching. But for now, I don't feel like you can notice, to be honest. Let me show you guys a little bit closer up. I just don't feel like it's all that noticeable to the point where I'm like, oh, better rip that out. You know what I mean? Uh, it's a little bit weird cause it's on the wrinkle. But yeah, the, all these sticks are two over two and everything else is one over two. I don't know. I don't think it's so bad, but I like it. I like the project. It's going fine. Um, I like the simple fabric and with the, the nice, simple DMC colors, I just think it's a good one and I've been having fun with it. The next project I worked on is Plum Street Samplers Autumn Cottage and there is a hashtag that was started by um, Sarah W and a couple of others. But like I said, I just have had a really, really bad memory recently. And I don't know if it has to do with the pregnancy or just being really, really tired from being pregnant, but I'm gonna list the ladies on the screen here. And I'll also put the hashtag on the screen, but um, we, well, I am joining them because um, I am getting closer and closer to getting a finish on this. And this is Plum Street Samplers Autumn Cottage, if I didn't say that already. And this is, I'm stitching on a 40 count vintage country mocha, one over two. I'm doing all the called for flosses, which I did split in half and I sent the other ones to Bridget, the museum stitcher. And the only one that didn't work for me was the roof. The roof is called for in bark, which again, the color for me was just a little bit too green. And I went ahead and swapped it with onyx, which is a gentle arch thread. It's just a deep like gray black and i think it's perfect i think it's really matching the cover photo but here is where i got to so i have like one pumpkin to put in here a little motif to put up here um i'm just kind of trying to get some fill in on the windows and the house i started the little branch of the second one as you can see i really jump all over with <laughs> My stitches I don't really just go with like a co completion of one area like I just I knew I could count off this pumpkin to get to the roof line and I was like okay I'm gonna start the roof <laughs> but I love it it's working out great and I realize it's so tiny I only need like one quadrant of this but I do have some plans to start some other um, little smalls and I'm gonna put them all in probably like a 
I really want to do like a glass jar, which is a little bit different than the dough bowl, but I kind of want like a, almost like a candy jar style jars. Um, I'm going to try to find one at like Goodwill or something because I know there's got to be some out there and fill that with some dough bowl or some little small pillows. I also would love to have a glass jar that looks like a candy jar that I have filled with a ton of little tiny like Halloween stitches that are on bright, colorful fabric. Like they look like little candies, but they're little cross stitch finishes, just tiny. Um, and I'd like to put it here next year. So <laughs> I mean, next year that's not going to happen, but maybe quite a few years from now, I would love that to be a finish. I feel like it would just be so cute and it'd be fun. I'd probably fill the center with like a styrofoam and then just put the little pillows on the exterior of that. But yeah, I feel like that'd be cute. Just a couple ideas like tossing around in my head for these smalls because I love large projects. I, I love a big, big finish that is just gonna stand out. And I know that that means that I don't have very many finishes in a year. Heck, I've had like, I think none this year. Oh, I had one. It was a little pillow I did that said be mine for Valentine's Day, but that's it. You know, it's like, I just, I don't get very many finishes in because I don't start very many smalls. And you know what? That's okay. <laughs> like I said, I've only been stitching for like a year and a half. And at the end of the day, in five years from now, I'm going to have all of these huge, massive projects finished. And I'm going to be so happy with myself and my choices. Um, so that's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the next project I worked on, this was one that I pulled out and I actually ended up just putting it away right away because I just really wasn't feeling it. Um, I love this pattern, but for some reason I just wasn't feeling like stitching on it. I think it's because it's very spring in my opinion and I'm like full on into autumn, into Halloween. I want all this spooky stuff. And this is a Plum Street Samplers, a shepherd song. Um, I'll pop it on the screen. I don't know if I have a picture of where I was when I picked this up because I did put a couple of stitches in it. So that's why I'm showing it. But um, it's uh, gonna be stitched on Nessie, which is a 32 count picture this plus fabric, or at least I purchased the 32 count, I should say. And all I did was add to the border. I just was sitting down, um, I think Daniel was watching TV or something, and I just started adding to this little border on the side. But that is literally all I did. <laughs> and I just realized it wasn't calling to me because we're, we're not in this, in my, my life, I'm not in this season anymore. You know what I mean? Like I springs over, <laughs> it's like 90 degrees yesterday. Um, no, it was like 80 something, but still no, thank you. So yeah, I love this color fabric though. If you're looking for a really good sky, summery spring sky blue, Nessie by Picture This Plus. It's beautiful modeling. It really does remind me of just like, yeah, a beautiful summer sky, a beautiful spring sky. Um, it's fabulous. I have a really, really long cut of it because I was initially needing a long, weird cut like this for, um, what is it? Mother's Tree by Lavender and Lace. But the more that I looked at it, the more I was like, you know what? I love that fabric, but that piece is it's one of those pieces that is definitely going to be an heirloom that you'll pass down. And I would like for the piece to be on a simple, simple fabric. So I actually think I'm going to go ahead and buy some like platinum Zweigart or a Zweigart fabric in probably like a 36 where I'll stitch it one over two and I'll just get a full yard of it. It is very affordable fabric too, I will say. And it's fabulous to stitch on those Zweigart bases. And I think I'm just going to do, yeah, a really simple, simple color. Um, and maybe do the silk floss. I did buy silk floss for it, but yeah, I haven't really decided with that one. It's one that I have sitting on the back burner because my um, maternal line is Norwegian and we have very long Norwegian names when I go back to like the 1700s where I'm starting for the pattern. And so it just, the idea of having to put all the effort into charting out every single letter is a lot for my brain <laughs> right now. <laughs> so We'll get there when we get there, but it's definitely not happening anytime soon. But that is definitely something I would love to love to stitch up. Um, I'd love to have, you know, passed down in the family. But put this in here. Oh, and this project bag is from Alexis. She sewed this up for me. I think it was my birthday, not this year, but last year, was it? I don't remember. <laughs> and then my last whip, this was for Pick a Whip, which is Marjorie from Marjorie Maid's channel. She does a Pick a Whip every like two to three weeks. Pretty much every time she puts out a video, there's a new Pick a Whip that gets drawn. Pick a Whip is a very, very loose guideline to help you narrow down your stitching. 
her last prompt was a project with a very sad, sad start. And I have quite a few that were like that, but she ended up pulling out her misspelt sampler and I really wanted to work on mine too. And I also kind of had a sad start on it. It wasn't the worst start of all of mine, but again, it's a very loose guideline. And I prefer that with my stitching because I don't really like being like, you have to stitch on this and you have to get this much done or this many days. That's just not my preference. Um, I'll pop a picture on the screen of the Misfelt Sampler. This is from Hemlock and Rye, which is Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. She has some beautiful reproduction samplers. Um, for starters, here are the amazing flosses. So, I mean, duh. <laughs> Had to buy that. It's fabulous. And I am stitching this on Picture This Plus Chalice in a 40 count. So I kitted this up in my LNS, which is Thread Needle Street. And I don't know, I, I saw the fabric and I was like, oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> and I had a picture of where I was before, I'm pretty sure. So I'll pop that on the screen. And here I am now. I had like a little Zoomy session with the girls and um, it was so much fun. <laughs> and I did a lot more of the quote, I believe, and then I started the bricks of the house. So I am just so happy with this. Oh, I love it so much. This project is amazing. I love this fabric. I wish that you guys could get a more true representation because it really is like a champagne color. I guess right there you can kind of see. It's like a golden yellow champagne or a chalice, I suppose, but I really, really love it. The only thing is, is that I will say my blue is very, very, very light. And so that definitely does make it to where it just doesn't show up very well. But honestly, it shows up enough that I'm not so pressed about it that I'm going to go and redo it all in a new color, you know? But yeah, I'm loving this. One over two on that 40 count is just fabulous. Love the tree. Love the border. It's amazing. I feel like this border must be such a popular antique border because I see it on so many reproduction pieces, but yeah, definitely um, check her out. I will, if I remember, put a link to the, <laughs> where you can buy this pattern. Cause yeah, I'm really happy with my progress on that. And um, it's just a really fun one to stitch on, but I know that like my mood is definitely switching. I'm not necessarily feeling so much like, stitching on these spring summery pieces. And so I kind of wanted to get a little bit of this fun, funky colored, you know, stitching in until, until next year, probably to be honest. But I did make this bag again, another one that I got the fabric at Gigi's and I love this fabric so much. Like I would wear this fabric. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it so much that I actually did the lining the same exact color. And um, the last project is not one that I stitch on yet, but it is the round robin style that I'm doing with myself and the girlies. I'm going to list them on the screen just because my memory is so bad. I feel like I will forget to say someone. <laughs> and so this is a pattern by Hello from Liz Matthews. I'm going to pop a picture on the screen. And this is the Quaker Gardens. It worked out perfectly because there are seven little Quaker flowers and that makes it to where we all get to stitch like one flower each. And I sent mine off last weekend, last week. I think I sent mine off last week and Alexis did receive it and she's already stitching away on it. She's amazing. I just received mine today, so I haven't started working on mine, but I got Elizabeth from Frizzy Lizzy Stitches. We'll be like alternating, alternating, but sending the, to the same person every time. So like geographically, we're sending to the person who's closest to us. So it's obviously the cheapest shipping. And um, Elizabeth is, first of all, look at how cute this is. It's so cute and it just makes you happy. <laughs> so the pattern is Quaker Gardens, of course. The designer, hello from Liz Matthews. Her fabric is Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers, 36 count linen, mermaid mules. Her floss is DMC. 3842 and she is stitching hers two over two. So of course I will be going ahead and copying all of that. So here is her floss, which how good is this together? Oh, I love it so much. And hers is literally so amazing. Um, if I showed you the back, you wouldn't know the difference from the front because her stitches are so beautiful and perfect. But this is her portion that she stitched. It's so cute. And there's her little initials, E-O. Pretty sure this is her new last name. She's getting married in a month. I sound like a stalker, but 
we all talk like every single day. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, I love it so much. I love how the blue is so dark that it almost looks black. Oh my goodness. And this fabric is fabulous. I've never stitched on this fabric before. Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. It's very, very smooth, very soft, very similar to the x but a little bit less smooth than the x designs. Look at how pretty it is. Do you see like the subtle green too? Ooh, it's fabulous. Also, I love this because um, football season has started and the Seahawks are green and blue, obviously. Um, are they sucking this year? Yeah, they are. We're not gonna talk about it. <laughs> but I totally feel like I'm gonna be stitching on this on a Sunday game day kind of deal. But I'm gonna get this done probably in a couple days worth of stitching, um, a few stitchy sessions, maybe in the parent drop-off line. And I'm gonna get this sent off ASAP, but I did wanna show it because I don't know if I'm gonna have it the next time that I'm film. So I'll take a picture of my portion once it's finished, and then I will, of course, include it in my next video. So that, that's all my stitching. Um, I have some happy mail, I have some knitting, and then I, ooh, I almost forgot. Again, terrible memory. <laughs> but I had said last time that I filmed that I wanted to start the Autumn Lane, um, is it Tonight We Ride? Tonight We Ride, yes. And I'm gonna pop a picture on the screen. It's amazing. And I have mine kitted up with Pumpkin King. And um, I was talking to Stitches Please, who if you haven't checked her out, definitely go take a look at her channel. She's um, a young mom like myself and she just had a little baby and I'm gonna have my son in a, quite a few months, but <laughs> I'm four months pregnant now, so. We've got a while. He's not done cooking in there, but um, yeah, it's just, she's really relatable and I've been really enjoying chatting with her, but we were talking about this pattern and fabrics and stuff. And um, I think that we're, because her fabric just shipped. So I think that we're both gonna start it. <laughs> there was like a siren going off, totally lost my train of thought, but we're gonna start it next weekend if she gets her fabric. And I'm just gonna use the hashtag that is the title of the pattern. So I'll pop that on the screen as well, because I feel like that's simple and easy. And I also just really wanna get this one started because I wanna get it started before Halloween hits and hopefully have like a good amount of progress. So yeah, next weekend, I'm gonna start that one. If you guys wanna join, feel free to use the hashtag. You can start it on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not super strict with things like that and I'm not even strict with styles, but I do know quite a few of you guys snagged up that pattern after I said in my last video that I was gonna be styling it. Or I guess I didn't really say I was gonna be styling. I said, um, do you want to? And a lot of you guys said yes. So let's do it. All right. So from there, I'm going to move on to happy mail just because it has to do with cross stitching. Then I'm going to move on to knitting and baby gifts. So if that was all you stuck around for, thank you so much for watching. Um, please do hit the subscribe button. And um, I do, I, I do kind of want to, a lot of channels have like an introductory video. I didn't do that myself. I just really hopped right in with a regular floss tube. So of course you guys have gotten to know so much about my life and my life and you know, my, I'm married, have a husband and all these things, but I would love if you guys have any questions so that I can do like an introductory video. I know it's been a year, but <laughs> I'm just going to do like a question and answer kind of video, a little short one that I can put together and put out in a couple of weeks time. So if you have any questions for me, personal whatever it might be, stitching related, doesn't matter. Ask what you wanna ask and go ahead and put that in the um, comment section below. But yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with me and thank you so, so very much to everyone who has been using my baby registry or my buy me a coffee and all that. Like I said, I'll have baby registry stuff at the very end. So if you are interested, stick around. If not, um, thank you so very much for just following and subscribing and being here with me. And <laughs> thank you for being my friend. <laughs> But yeah, I'm gonna move on to Stitchy Kindness and let's hop right into it. I'm sorry, this whole time Binks has been going ham on that ball. He loves that ball. So Alexis had a few copies of this little tiny Halloween chart and so she sent me one. I think I'm gonna go through Stash and try to like make this a little bit more spooky by using some like um, over dyed kind of spooky. And then she also sent me a really nice card. It says, you are magic. I'm not gonna read the inside, but I loved it. Actually, I'm gonna pop it up now since I've showed it because I feel like it's kind of Halloween. Isn't that cute? <laughs> she also knows me very well. and <laughs> She sent me this Autumn Lane. What is this one called? Moons Out, Brooms Out, which I absolutely love this. I think I'm gonna change the lady's hair to be black or brown like mine. 
Oh, I love it so much. It's very cute. And um, I, I was saying this before, I heard the really loud sound outside, so I had to close my window, but um, Alexis was going through her fabric stash. And the thing is, is with her fabrics, she, just like all of us, she started cross-stitching herself. She started many years before I did, but that means that she has accumulated a stash of fabrics that she just, it's not really her style anymore. And I mean, I'm definitely guilty of this. I have given away patterns even that I just realized this isn't my style anymore. I don't know what I was thinking when I purchased this kind of thing. And it's not even that we don't like them because you know, you look at it in your stash and it makes you happy and you're like, yay, I have all this stuff and I can just go through it and it's fun. But for her, it was getting to the point where it was like overwhelming how much stuff she had in her stash that she knew she wasn't going to use. Um, she knows that I love Halloween though. I love dark creepy fabrics and, um, I also have no stash of Ada's. Like I think I have two pieces of Ada and then I have a few that are in kitted up projects, but she sent me a bunch of Ada and I'm so very grateful. So thank you so much, Alexis. But first one is a fabric flare 16 or 18 count. She wasn't sure with this one. I'm not sure either, to be honest. I don't know, maybe an 18, it looks pretty small, but it's a huge cut. And I think, honestly, Alexis, I'm gonna use this for this. Is this what you had kitted up together originally? because that's fabulous. Um, so <laughs> it's a really good size, like I said, so it's double the size of that. It's a, a stamped fabric, but I really, really like this. So I'm either gonna use it for that Moons Out, Brooms Out. Ooh, I love the modeling on that. Or I'm gonna use it for, what is it? All the little tiny ornaments, because I really want to do a Halloween ornament tree or like the glass jar that I have them all in. So I think I'm gonna use this for some of those. The next one is Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers, yeah, in cobblestone, which is a 14 count Ada, so quite a bit larger, but beautiful color. I actually haven't unfolded this or anything. Let's go ahead and take a look. Let's take a look together. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's nice. That is pretty. And this is a fat quarter, right? Fat half? Fat quarter, fat quarter. <laughs> you guys know I'm not good at remembering that stuff. But very, very subtle modeling. This would be beautiful for a sampler. It'd be beautiful for, again, Halloween stuff, Halloween smalls. I, yeah, I really like this. Thank you, thank you, Alexis. The next one, Color and Cotton, Old West. This is the Lugana, a 32 count. I've never actually used a color and cotton fabric, but this is, this is nice. So I really like this. It's a really good cut of fabric, very good neutral. It's like a toned down Heartland. I picture this was. Beautiful golden color. I'm not sure what I'm gonna stitch on this, but I definitely, I mean, I'm sure I got some. <laughs> <laughs> I could definitely imagine um, a Christmas scene on this. I don't know. This like warm, I don't know. This warm tone makes me feel Christmassy. The next one, this one's really fun, is Barbara All Creations Hand Dyed Ada, and it's called Woodland Halloween. So I mean, obviously. <laughs> obviously, I love it. But it is an opal as well. And I don't have, I think I had one opal in stash that I accidentally bought. But how amazing is this? Look, okay, let me get it all unfolded. This is very much reminiscent of my cut of murky. This is how green my cut of murky is, but look at it. Oh, it's so good. I feel like this would be perfect for Halloween ornaments. So that's definitely what I'm gonna use it for because I think it's a 14 count Ada. No, 18 count, sorry, that was way off. <laughs> But I think that just solid black stitching or like some kind of Halloween quote, something that is like big blocky Halloween spooky letters. Um, I feel like something like that would be really good. But yeah, very different fabric, very different from anything I have in stash. It definitely is reminiscent of murky to me, but the orange in this is a pumpkin orange. And in murky, it's not, it's a neutral beigey brown. But the next one is, and the same exact creator, Barbara All Creations in peach cream, which again, I really feel like this is more Halloween because it is a pumpkin orange, which you guys know I stitch, a lot of things on a pumpkin orange fabric that are Halloween because I like um, solid, like just plain black stitching. 
And so fabrics like this make that a little bit more fun. And this is also an opalescent, so it does have a sparkle to it. Love that. And this one is definitely going to be used for Halloween smalls for sure, but it's such a large cut. I always feel so like wasteful using these huge cuts to do um, these tiny little smalls, but you know, it, it, it's, it's nice to have some smalls and get some finishes done. This is Ada dyed by Alexis and it was a 14 or a 16 count. She didn't quite know with this one, but really, really pretty modeled dark blue. I really like this. This is very pretty. So love that. Not sure what I'm going to stitch on that one. And then the last one, this is a really pretty. This is a color and cotton sweet tea, which is a 32 count Lugana. It's from their May 2022 fabric of the month and it is a fourth of a yard. So I really like this color. This would be a really good one for, oh, what is it? The vanity sampler? I feel like this would be a good one for the original colorway of the vanity sampler, even for Cam's conversion, but I really like this. This is very pretty. It's a very nice neutral. I feel like there's no modeling in this. Not that I can see. Yeah, I don't know. Not that I can see really. But it is a very nice, just a good neutral. So yeah, love that. That was all my gifts from Alexis. I was so generous of her. That's so much fabric and it's so much fabric that I get to add to my stash. And it just gives me a lot more opportunities to pull things from stash, which is very, very helpful. Cause um, as I mentioned in the video, I'm four months pregnant right now. And so I'm definitely not spending money on cross stitching supplies. I am saving up for the medical bills. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, this was super, super generous of her and I'm just really excited, excited to start a bunch of little Halloween smalls and um, add that to my stash finally because I've been hoarding it away like a dragon in a bag <laughs> until I showed you guys. From there, I'm going to move on to my knitting. So I'm going to move on to my knitting and this actually got done in two days. Realized I was running out of yarn. This is all I have left. I have enough for like the first sleeve, but I need to run back to the store and grab another ball. But it's just 100% acrylic. It's really soft. It's like an acrylic nylon yarn, so I can wash it. But it's a garter stitch, really stretchy. Um, I'll link the pattern below because it is a free Ravelry download, which I felt was really cool. So um, got the little hood done, it started on the body, and I realized that my gauge is really off. So the arm's eye, which is the hole for the arm here, is very large and it's definitely not gonna be a newborn size. It's gonna be closer to like a nine to 12, um, 12 month size. And so I need to get more yarn so that I can knit the proper length of sleeve. And I need to pick out the bottom row that I bound off and add a few more inches. But it is really cute. It's going well. I do like it. I just have it on my child glue nine inch circulars for the arm. Um, and again, garter, super stretchy. It's just going to be one of those ones that I'm able to pop it in the wash. I'm able to pop it on our sun and it has a hood. It rains a lot in Washington. I'm sure that that's a common, <laughs> common knowledge, but it does rain a lot here. And so he'll be needing a jacket like this in December and in the spring and stuff like that. It's just a DK weight. So not too heavy, not too light either, but yeah, I just thought this is a really nice color. I love the shade of blue. I think the color name was Sky or something like that, but really pretty, really, really soft. And it is all acrylic nylon, so I can just throw it in the wash, which is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> and my goal is kind of like, I want to get a piece of knitting out for our son every single month. So every month until he's born, I want to get at least one knitted object done. Um, that's my goal for now, which might change, but I'm, I'm working on it. Um, I need to go and snag another ball of this probably today or tomorrow and finish that up so I can show you guys it complete next week. But let's move on to all the gifts that I've received for our son. So I'm gonna go and grab all that and um, probably meet you guys on the floor where I sit and <laughs> talk to y'all occasionally. So see you in a second. I'm sitting on the ground now just because I find that that's a little bit easier when I have the boxes around me, but I just want to take a minute right off the bat to say thank you so much to everyone who has been using my registry. I really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, Daniel and I aren't having a baby shower for the second baby, and that just means that the baby shower <laughs> not happening. The registry is really important to us, and um, Obviously, I share it so that my friends and family can purchase, but we've been so, so blessed that my cross-stitching family has been purchasing for us, which it blows my mind, to be honest, like that you guys want to buy stuff for my son. I'm not going to cry. 
Um, so yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> but I'm gonna start off with Kelly. I have talked to Kelly before. I really love her, she's so, so sweet. And we talk on Instagram. She sent my daughter a cute little shirt that says Big Sister. I'm gonna pop a picture of Amira wearing it because um, Amira's already taken that and claimed it. But she also sent off these super cute little towels. <laughs> it's a, I think there's two in here. I don't have it opened it, but how cute is that? They're just so cute. <laughs> Um, so now I feel like I have a good little stock of baby towels. Um, I do laundry a lot, so I'm not too worried about having a ton, but yeah, I just feel really lucky about that. And they're just so stinking cute. And um, the next gift that I received, this is from Casey and she left me a really, really nice note. So thank you so much, Casey. But she sent over all of these freaking adorable onesies. They're so tiny and they're so soft. I love this one, but I love black. So <laughs> of course, this one just says hello. So I really love those. Thank you so much, Casey. This is from Maddie at Kitty Stitch, which is so funny because um, I actually had this in my own cart to purchase and it is a little uh, baby like high chair, but it's not really a high chair. You can strap it onto a seat or it has like rubber grippers at the bottom and you can uh, set it on a table. I really wanted something like this that was uh, not gonna take up too much space in our apartment, but also like something that was just easy to use at the physical table itself. And then she also sent an, a pack of little silicone bibs. I love these because they're very easy to clean. You can just rinse them out and sanitize them and it just is so, so easy. So thank you, Maddie. Maddie can be found on Instagram as Kitty Stitch. She is a monogamous stitcher and she gets so much done. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> so check her out if you haven't already. Um, the next thing I got, which uh, this is amazing. I loved my boppy when Amira was born. I wish I would have saved it now. <laughs> because they're not cheap, man. And um, Angel sent this over. She sent me a message because I think Amazon left out the little thank you note. And so I didn't know who it was from. And she reached out to me on Instagram when I posted a picture and said that this is from her. And I just love it. The pattern is so soft and pretty. And I just, I can't wait for that to be me with my son. <laughs> uh, and then I also received another package. Out the crinkles. Oh no! You know, sometimes my daughter goes through these things and she she takes out the thank you the thank you notes. So I might just have to find. Oh no, okay, she didn't. Whew, thank goodness. These are from Inez and she just sent me a nice little congratulations. And these are some of my favorite little sleeping suits for babies because they're open at the bottom. And she sent me over a bunch of these, little cacti, little sunshines, little let the adventure begin. And then how freaking cute is this? You guys are gonna die, it's so freaking cute. <laughs> it's so tiny! Oh my gosh, is this a little brother? Oh, oh my goodness, it's so cute. And it's like very stretchy, love that. So super comfy, easy to get over baby's head, very stretchy. But not only that, it had the matching little cap, freaking adorable, and the matching little uh, hand covers, which I love that, I love these. I use them for Amira as well. Cause yeah, baby nails are really sharp. I don't know what, I don't know what's going on there, but those things are like daggers. <laughs> and then the next thing, and this is the last thing I have to show is from Maline. She sent me a really nice little note and I love Maline so much. Um, <laughs> she's actually been a subscriber to the channel since I very first started my channel. Oh, he ran into the, he ran into the tripod. But anyways, uh, Maline has been part of my community since the very beginning and I love her so much. Literally love her with all my heart. Um, and it's crazy you can say these things about people that you have never met, but I feel like I know her. I feel like she knows me. I feel like we have a connection and a true friendship. And um, I mean, if you guys are the type of person who like scrolls through the comments, you'll see Maline comment and me comment back and we tell each other we love each other. And it's just the best because <laughs> I do. I love you guys. <laughs> but she sent over the softest, just 
most beautiful swaddle cloth. It's very large and oh, it's so soft, so soft. And it also has the matching little cap. I'm gonna try to get pictures of him swaddled in this when he is born. And then um, I'll email the pictures to you, Moline. <laughs> but yeah, how cute is that? It's so soft. Oh my goodness. All these little newborn hats, I'm hoping they fit his head. So like my daughter, she has my husband's head and um, he has a really large head. My husband's tomorrow in Hawaiian and I don't know. I think it might just be part of like his family because they all have like um, the hat size is pretty large on the men's, like all the men. <laughs> even his dad too. So I don't know, but my daughter got his head. And so like she, all her newborn hats that I brought to the hospital, they did not, they did not fit her. <laughs> so I'm hoping because this one's really stretchy, like super stretchy that it'll fit him. I'm pretty sure it will. And I'm really excited about it because I can swaddle him up in this and he's going to look so cute. Oh, I'm so, I'm so excited. So thank you very much, Maline. Um, I really appreciate you and you know that I just um, have a lot of love for you lady so thank you but yeah that was my last gift and um it's just so much it's so generous you know what I mean like I just it blows me away every time that I receive a package I am genuinely so blown away and just thank you thank you very very much um I can't believe this community's generosity. And I know I say this all the time and it's probably like a broken record at this point, but it really does blow you away. Uh, if you're ever thinking about getting involved in this community and starting a floss tube and you're just like something, little thing, something small is holding you back, let go of it and do it. Um, it's changed my life being part of your guys' lives and having you all here for me. Uh, it just makes me feel so much better every day and yeah, it's really, really helped me in a lot of ways, especially like my mental health. It helps me a lot. But anyways, um, love you all so much. That's all that I have to share over the past few weeks. I do have some life stuff. So life stuff would be Amira, our five-year-old daughter. She started kindergarten. Crazy, crazy. I'm going to pop a picture of her on her first day. She's standing actually right here. <laughs> and, um, I have a couple pictures of her with her classmates, but I don't want to share that stuff just because I would have to block out all the other kids' faces and stuff like that. If you're interested in seeing more like personal photos of my life, go to my Instagram. Um, my Instagram is still my personal Instagram. Of course, I post a lot of stitchy stuff, but it's, it's still my personal Instagram. It's just my first and last name. But she is loving school. She's doing great. She's had homework every single day, which has definitely been hard. Um, I changed my work schedule to where I drop her off and pick her up every single day. And parent like drop off is no joke, man. And parent pickup, whew, it is wicked. You have to get there almost an hour early to be like in the beginning of the line. Oh, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot and it's really, it's pretty stressful. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to say it's stressful. It's just that it's frustrating when you have a bunch of people around you that like don't understand the parent pickup and drop off. It's kind of just like an airport. So it's a pretty self-explanatory situation. You know, you roll around in a loop, you see your kid, you stop, they get in, you keep going. You're not allowed to get out of your car. You're not allowed to do a lot of other things, you know, but other people have a hard time following those rules. <laughs> so it hasn't been my best uh, experience, but I've heard it gets better. <laughs> I think it's because a lot of people give up on the parent pickup after a couple months and they're like, yeah, take the school bus. But, um, I already changed my work schedule completely just to accommodate being able to drop her off and pick her up. And that's totally fine. It's been an adjustment, but honestly, I feel like I've had a lot more stitchy time because I have been able to stitch in the car for that time that I'm waiting for her or that we're waiting in the morning for her to go actually into the school. And that's been great. Um, it's been a fun little time for us to spend time together. We get home, I help her with her homework every day and that's been good. It's definitely hard for a kindergartner to do that much homework. I mean, there are some days that she has three to four sheets of homework and she's five. So that doesn't go over well every single day, but it's a struggle. And it's a struggle that I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to because a lot of you are mothers and it's been really nice to have so many people that 
are able to, I can relate with them, you know, like I, I'll post my Instagram story and I'll get a, you know, a bunch of uh, messages throughout the day. And I'm like, thank goodness it's not just me. You know, it, you just feel less alone because it is hard. It's a big change and um, it's a lot to, to go through. You know, you, you were the center of your child's life. You were the only adult that they had these real, real strong connections with. And then all of a sudden they're at school and they now have best friends that aren't you. And, you know, they love their teachers and, um, it's a huge change. Thanks for listening to me blibber blabber about nonsense. <laughs> um, and like I said, if anyone did stick around for this whole portion, if you guys uh, want to leave me some questions and stuff like that below, uh, let me know because I'd love to do a little like question and answer video that just like is a, a little bit of a way that if you're new to the channel, you're able to just click on one video and get to know me without having to watch like 30 videos. <laughs> but um, Thank you so much for sticking around. Um, have a fabulous next couple weeks and I will catch you in two weeks. See you then. Bye. Look, these cover photos ain't easy. It ain't easy. I just blame. hate when I do that. Oh God, I feel like my jingly earrings. Thanks. He likes to try to open the cabinet under the sink and get in there. So he like goes like this to the cabinet door. And so it sounds like there's knocking or like a banging sound. It's the cat. Okay. I'm already, I already got distracted and I lost. This is what I mean about my memory. I'm going to have to put it on the screen because I, I forget what I say by the time I've, I've gotten to the last person. Right. I don't know why these fire trucks are like so dramatic. Why are you screaming, sir? Stop yelling at me.